This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I want to say thank you for letting me come right into your space. This week and next week, I'm going to be doing something I've never done before. I'm going to be teaching my favorite sparkling gems. And I want you to order the whole series, which is called My Favorite Sparkling Gems, 10 Bible teachings with hidden gems from the Greek. And it comes with a wonderful study guide. And we're also offering you right now my books by the same title, Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number one, and Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number two. Now, I know that when you look at these books, they look enormous. But my friend, you don't read them all at once. They are daily devotionals. And people all over the world read Sparkling Gems 1 and Sparkling Gems 2. And it doesn't matter which one you begin with. You can begin with either one of them. But let me tell you a story about Sparkling Gems number 1. Look at the size of this book. Now, friends, this to me is a miraculous book because I wrote it in 60 days. Look at that. How in the world is that possible? And this Sparkling Gems Volume 1 has more than 1,000 Greek word studies in it. And when I go back and look at how I wrote it and how quickly I wrote it, it is amazing to me. And because of that, I have to refer to it. Sometimes I can't remember everything that I covered in Sparkling Gems number one. But my friend, if you want a devotional which will take you deep into the Bible and really open the scriptures to you in a very simple way, you need sparkling gems from the Greek, either number one or number two. And you can order all of these things by going online right now or by giving us a call. And if you're not a partner with our ministry, would you please become a partner? We need you. We're taking the teaching of the Bible around the world, and it takes a lot of resources to do that. And when you become a partner, you help us by putting fuel in the tank so that this gospel machine can take the teaching of the Bible to the ends of the earth, and we really are reaching the ends of the earth. And the moment you become a partner with our ministry, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying welcome to the family. Denise's book, which is called The Gift of Forgiveness, and my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone. We always send these two books to anyone who becomes a partner with our ministry. And when you reach out to us, would you please let us know how to pray for you? We're praying people. We are very committed to praying for you. And the moment your email shows up in our inbox or when the telephone rings, immediately we begin to release our faith for Jesus to do something marvelous for you, and he really will. And we're waiting to join you in prayer. So let us know how to pray for you. But hey, I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Every day this week, I'm going to be teaching you gems from Sparkling Gems number one. And again, if you don't have a copy of this book, go online or give us a call because you need a copy of this very unique daily devotional. But today, if you already have Sparkling Gems, I'm going to be teaching to you from these pages. Page number 19, 462. 647 and 997. And today I'm going to be teaching a gem which is called the Holy Spirit knows how to get you there faster and safer. That already sounds good, doesn't it? Well, open your Bible. We always use the Bible in this program. And today we're going to go to John chapter 16, where Jesus is teaching his disciples about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And when you come to John chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus says this, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. So Jesus is talking to his disciples about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And he says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come. And by the way, it's important that Jesus called him the spirit of truth. Jesus referred to him as the spirit of truth three times in John 
chapter 14, 15, and 16, because he was driving into the heart of the disciples and us that the Holy Spirit can be trusted. He is not a spirit that's going to mislead you. He is the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. You can bank on whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do. And now Jesus says, guys, he is the spirit of truth, and here's what he'll do. Look again. In John 16, verse 13, Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Well, that word guide is very important. It is the Greek word hodega. It is in the Greek word hodas. Uh, the word hodas is really the Greek word for a road or for a path. But when it becomes the particular word that is used here, it no longer depicts a road or a path, but one who leads you down a road, one who leads you down a path. And it was the very word used to describe a guide who would lead you on an excursion. Well, I don't know if you've ever been led by a professional guides, but guides are really important because they know all the sites. They know what is interesting. They know what is not interesting. They know the right way to go to save you time and to get you to the end safer and faster. They know how to really give you a pleasurable experience. And if you will trust your guide and follow your guide's experience and instruction, then you will have a marvelous experience. And that is the word which Jesus now uses in this text. Let me give you an example. I live in Moscow, Russia, and I have been through the Moscow Kremlin Armory Museum countless, countless times. And as a result, I could really give you a pretty good tour of the Armory Museum. Now, there are other guides who will tell you things that are not interesting, that will bore you. They'll lead you this way and they'll lead you that way. And your back will hurt by the time you get out because all of the floors are made of granite. And not only that, there's only one place in the whole museum where there is a toilet. So you need to stop at the toilet when you can because there's not another chance. Well, if I'm your guide, I will really show you something amazing. I'll walk you through all the coronation dresses of the czars and their wives the clothing of the czar, the coronation dresses of their wives that are just amazing. Those coronation dresses were spun of pure silver. And that's why their form has never changed once they've been placed in the museum. The entire dress is made of silver. Or there's a gown there, which was worn by one of the priests of the church that has 168 thousand pearls. It is amazing. Or how about the throne of Boris Gudinov or the throne of Ivan the Terrible or the throne of the Romanovs or the double seated throne of Peter the Great and his brother. And then I could take you right and walk you into the room where all the jewelry is held. The jewelry which was once used by horses horses. You should see the jewelry they used for the horses. And then when you come out of that room, you hang a right, and there are the crowns which were used by the early Romanovs, Ivan the Great. You see the crown there of Boris Gudinov, all the crowns, and to your left, there are more thrones. And then you take another right, and bam, there you're in the big round room where you walk through all the carriages, and particularly splendid are the carriages of the Empress Elizabeth I, who was called the party queen of Russia. She loved parties. In fact, she made a rule that if you attended one of her balls in St. Petersburg, you could never wear the same dress twice. And to make sure you would never wear the same dress twice, when you exited the ball at the end of the party, they stamped the back of your dress with an ink blot so you could never wear it again. Those carriages in that room which were hers are the most elaborate of all. She was the party queen. And then there are the carriages of Catherine the Great. Ay, yeah, yeah, they are just magnificent. That's all just floor number one. Then you walk up the big set of steps that lead up to the second floor of the armory where you see all the ambassadorial gifts which were brought to the czar which really sheds light on the verse from Proverbs, which says a man's gift makes room for him. No ambassador ever came to the czar without bearing a gift because the gifts literally opened doors for them. And that room is filled 
with the most splendid gifts. Now, I could go on and on and on and on and on, but let me tell you, there's a lot of things in the museum you don't want to see. You can get too much information. By the time you leave, your back can hurt, your feet can hurt, but if I was your guide, and if you really trusted me and listened to me and followed my experience, I would give you an experience in that museum that you would never forget. By the time you left, you would be elated because of the experience you had due to your guide. Now, all of that, that whole concept is in this word guide, which is here in John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you. The Greek word hodega, which means, listen to this. The Holy Spirit already knows every route you should take. He is the mind of God. He knows everything in front of you. The Holy Spirit knows every assault that the devil has already planned for you. The devil knows how to get you to your destination faster. He knows how to get you there safer so that by the time you are finished, you don't say, oh, walking with God has just been so hard. My friends, if you'll follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit, your walk with God will absolutely be the most pleasurable adventure. All of that is a gem that is in this word guide in John chapter 16, verse 13. But wait, there's more. Then when you go to Romans chapter 8, verse 14, the apostle Paul gives us light on the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what he says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And here we find that if you are a son of God, if you're a child of God, you have a right to be led. But when you read it in the Greek text, here's another gem, you find the Greek structure is different. Rather than say as many as are led by the Spirit of God, the Greek actually says, as many as by the Spirit of God are being led. It puts the Holy Spirit at the very first part of the verse, and we are behind him, almost like we are tagalongs. And my friends, I want you to understand the Holy Spirit wants to be out front in your life. We are to be tagalongs following him, following his lead. You know, when I was a boy, in our home, we played follow the leader. And unfortunately, my older sister always designated herself as the leader. Now, Rhonda is a very dear friend of mine. I talk to her every day. But Rhonda always said, I'm the leader, especially when it was time to clean the house. <laughs> and Rhonda would say, Rick, you're to do this. And Lori, you're to do this. And our job was to follow the leader. And we did not dare argue with Rhonda because she was older than us. We just followed the leader and explicitly did what we were told. Well, in the very same way, we now find in Romans chapter 18, verse 14, that the Holy Spirit wants to be the leader. And he says, follow me. I'll tell you where to go. I'll tell you exactly what to do. You can trust me. I am the spirit of truth. My friends, the Holy Spirit wants to be out front and he wants to lead you. But the word lead in Romans chapter 8, verse 14 is interestingly the Greek word ago. Now here's another gem. This word ago really has two meanings. Number one, it means I lead, but it was also used in an athletic sense to describe two wrestlers who were struggling with each other, the other one trying to throw the other to the mat. This is very important that it depicts a wrestling match. But secondly, this word ago in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, was the very word used agriculturally to describe the moment when a farmer would wrap a rope around the neck of a cow or the neck of a mule or the neck of some beast and that he would tug and the beast would just obediently follow. This is really important because here we find two important pictures. Here's a real gem. Number one, the Holy Spirit wants to be out front. And the Holy Spirit, in a certain way, you could say symbolically, has put a rope around our neck and he's tugging on us, trying to lead us. Hmm. Now, I know that most people would like to have a flash of lightning or they'd like to have a divine dream during the night, but that is not usually 
the way that the Holy Spirit leads us. Usually it's just like what I'm describing. He just tugs on our heart and we have to be sensitive to listen to it. And in fact, sometimes the tugging of the Holy Spirit is so gentle, you might miss it or dismiss it as just being something that you're thinking. But the Holy Spirit's tugging. He's trying to pull us in a right direction. And as the sons and daughters of God, we have to pay attention to that tugging in our heart. But sometimes it throws us into a wrestling match. There's the other meaning of this word led, the Greek word ago, which was used athletically to describe a wrestling match. When we know in our hearts, the Holy Spirit's telling us to do one thing, but our head says, tilt, 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 this certainly cannot be right. Certainly the Holy Spirit's not telling me this. And a wrestling match takes place between our spirit and our mind. And in those moments, we have to choose to submit our mind to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and I want to give you a very specific example. Years ago, Denise and I were doing a meeting in the city of Chicago, and we'd been to all the meetings. Our friends were preaching, and we were having such a good time, and one day after the morning meeting, we went home and we took a nap, and while I was lying there trying to sleep, I felt inwardly disturbed, and I recognized the Holy Spirit was trying to tell me something. I felt that tug on my heart. And I felt the Holy Spirit leading me, pulling on my heart, that I was to skip the meeting that night and stay home, that I was not to leave the room. Well, that just seems so weird to me. Why would the Holy Spirit tell me to stay in the room? And I actually said to Denise, I don't know why, but for some reason, I feel like I'm supposed to stay in the room tonight while you go to the service. Why would the Holy Spirit want me to stay in the room? I struggled with it. It was a real wrestling match between my head and my spirit. And finally, I said to Denise, you know, I, I, I'm just going to dismiss this. There is no reason I can figure out why God would want me to stay in the hotel room tonight. I started putting on my clothes, getting ready for church, and suddenly there was a knock on our door, and I thought that it was our driver who had come to get us. So I yelled. And I said, hey, I'll be ready in just a few moments. We're running a little late, but we'll, we'll be out soon. Well, very quickly, I was dressed, so I opened the door, and there was no one there. So I said to Denise, I think the driver's downstairs waiting for us. I'm going to go downstairs and tell him that you'll be down in just a minute, and we'll be ready to go. But when I went downstairs, there was no driver there. In fact, our driver was late. Finally, the driver showed up. I got in the car. Eventually, Denise came. We both got in the car, and we headed across the city of Chicago to the meeting. And the whole way across the city of Chicago, I was inwardly disturbed because I kept thinking. You see, sometimes it's a thought. Sometimes it's just a tug on your heart. You've got to stay in the room. Why did you leave the room? I've explicitly told you to stay in the room. But my mind said, why? Why? Why would the Holy Spirit tell me to stay in the room while the glory of God's going to be poured out in this meeting tonight? That's where I want to be. But I kept feeling this tug to stay in the room. And I said to Denise, I don't know what I should do. Should I go? Should I turn around? We drove a few more miles. I said, should we go? Should I turn around? And Finally, the driver got involved in the conversation and said, Mr. Renner, if you wish, I'll turn the car around. I'll take you back home. I was embarrassed in front of him because I was wavering back and forth. And finally, I said, no, 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 just go to the meeting. So we went to the meeting, walked into the green room where all the speakers were. We got to see everybody. And when they all turned to walk into the auditorium for the meeting, I looked at Denise and said, see you later. I don't know why. I have to go back to the room. I have to be in that room tonight. So I got in the car. The driver started taking me back across Chicago to the room. And finally, just about the time we were to the hotel, I remembered that I was missing my dinner. So I said to the driver, stop, I want to run and get a hamburger. So I went and got a hamburger, which took more time. And then I saw there was a convenience store and remembered that we needed toothpaste. So I walked across the parking lot, went in to get some toothpaste. Finally, I got the hamburger, I got the toothpaste, got back into the car, said to the driver, let's go back to the hotel. Went back to the hotel. The person at the registration desk said, oh, you're back so early. Is the meeting finished? Why did you come back early? I didn't even know what to say. What am I going to say? Uh... 
I just feel like I'm supposed to be in the room. There was really a struggle going on between my mind and my spirit. So I punched the button on the elevator, went up to my floor, walked down to my room, opened the door, stepped in, and lo and behold, our room looked like a tornado had been through it. Suitcases were opened, clothes were laying all over the room, my computer bag had been gone through, my computer was gone, my passports were gone, everything was gone. Denise's jewelry bag was opened, all of her jewelry bag was missing. And I realized we have been robbed. We've been robbed. And when I was standing there in the middle of our room, which was ransacked, I heard the Holy Spirit say, now you know why I told you to stay in the room. If I had stayed in the room, it would not have happened. And you know the little knock that was at the door? It was the thief who had come to see if we were still there or if he could go ahead and invade our room and ransack it and rob us. But if I had stayed in the room and listened to that tugging on my heart, no one would have ever come in the room. And probably that night when Denise would have come home from the meeting, I probably would have said, you know, I stayed here, nothing happened. I don't know why the Lord wanted me to stay in the room, but that night I realized there have been many times when the Holy Spirit has told me to do things which I have obeyed and never really knew why. But because we obeyed, we avoided something. And my friends, the Holy Spirit was tugging on my heart, but my mind did not understand. But when you come to Romans chapter 8, 14, we find this amazing gem that we are to be led by the Holy Spirit. He wants to tug on our hearts, that Greek word ago, which means to lead an animal by a rope to tug, and the Greek word ago, which also can describe a wrestling match. But we have to win the wrestling match, submit to our spirit, so the Holy Spirit can lead us. And if we'll listen, he'll get us where we need to go a lot faster, a lot safer, and we will avoid a lot of traps which the enemy has been set for us. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. People all over the world have read the best-selling daily devotional, Sparkling Gems from the Greek. Now for the first time ever, Rick Renner dives deep into these books to extract and share his 10 favorite gems. In this series, Rick teaches, the Holy Spirit knows how to get you there faster and safer. How to experience peace, even in difficult circumstances. The devil's destination. Telltale signs that bitterness is growing in your heart. What is a cloud of witnesses? On what basis will you be rewarded? It's time for you to start using the gifts and talents God gave you. Perilous times shall come, equipped to sail victorious through stormy times. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Rick says, there is so much in these devotionals that it's difficult to choose my favorites, but I'm excited to present these particular 10 sparkling gems. This 10-part series is available in digital or physical format, starting at just $20. We're also offering Rick's daily devotional, Sparkling Gems from the Greek, Volumes 1 and 2. As you read these daily gems, you'll understand the New Testament like never before. These sparkling gems will open the scriptures to you, and you'll walk away every day with precious treasures that were mined for your personal benefit. Sparkling gems from the Greek volumes one and two are available for $45 each. Don't miss these special offers, the 10-part series, My Favorite Sparkling Gems, and the devotional, Sparkling Gems from the Greek, volume one and volume two. Or you can order a bundle of both the series and the devotionals. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I'm standing in the big studio in our new building in Moscow. You helped us build this building. Behind me is the big fireplace. It's covered. That's really the focus of the new studio. There's going to be library shelves and so many wonderful things, and I'm going to be sitting right here teaching the Bible verse by verse, diving into the Greek New Testament to bring teaching that people can trust to the ends of the world. And when I tell you the ends of the world, I really mean that. People are reaching out to us from the farthest ends of the world saying thank you for bringing this teaching right to where we are. 
And my friends, you're a big part of this because you're a partner. You helped build this building, and I want to say thank you to you. I've told you before, it's not about buildings. You just have to have the space so you can create programming. And in just a few weeks, my team is going to move into the second floor of this building while they continue to finish the first floor of the building. It's pretty exciting. But thank you so much for helping us. We really do what we say we're going to do, so here it is. And at the same time, we've been retiring the debt on the big Tulsa facility. That facility is so wonderful. And from that office in Tulsa, we are ministering to the needs of our partners. Partner ministry is not secondary to us. It is first place. We really mean it when we call people partners. And in that Tulsa facility, we're taking calls, making calls, touching lives, and strengthening people who need to be strengthened. That's God's mandate to us to strengthen those that are weak and those who need to be stronger. And we're reaching out by faith and through various means to touch people. And what a pleasure it is. It's really an honor to have partners. And that means you. Thank you for being a partner. And right now, we're paying off that Tulsa facility and a lot of it has already been paid off. That's miraculous. But it's been possible because of the grace of God the favor of God, and because of your faithful and generous giving. And I want to say thank you on behalf of me and Denise and our sons, our family, and our ministry team for the way that you've joined hands with us to help retire the debt on that building. My friends, when that building is paid off, it will suddenly release a flood of finances so we can take the teaching of the Bible even further to the ends of the earth. And that's God's call to us. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And that's our task, to feed many the word of God. And today I want to thank you for what you've done to help us build this facility and to pay off the Tulsa building. And together we can get this done. Today, my friends, we have just covered one gem, and this week we're going to be covering gems from the Greek in every single program, and I want you to order the whole series for this week and next week together. It is 10 programs, and it's called My Favorite Sparkling Gems, 10 Bible Teachings with Hidden Gems from the Greek, and it comes with a study guide, and I'm also offering you my books. There are two of them, Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number one, and Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number one. Number two, in both of these books, there are more than 1,000 Greek word studies, but it's been written in a way that you can use it like a daily devotional. It's not difficult to read. Hey, don't be bothered by the size of this book. You'll get through this book before you even realize it. You'll feel like a champion when you're done, and you will have learned so much about hidden gems in the Greek in the New Testament. But I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for the amazing word of God. Lord, you tell us in Psalm 119 that you'll open our eyes and help us to behold wonderful things in the Bible. And Lord, we thank you for helping us to do that. And we thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you lead us and help us to have the bravery to follow. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow, but until then, please never forget Ecclesiastes 8.4, which says, where the word of a king is, there is power. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.